Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at uh, modular asset generation. Uh, for today I will be using uh, Monument Valley as an example. So this game uses what is known as modular design. So it has a, a bunch of game elements that are reused in a bunch of different levels. Um, so what we need to do is to create a few of those objects and then I can show you uh, how to make different levels using just a few simple objects. So module asset generation is a very powerful tool because it makes your levels look consistent uh, as everything has like the same design language but also it makes your um, workflow very efficient as you don't need to uh, recreate um, assets for the level all the time you can just reuse the ones you already have. Uh, in this example we'll be um, creating few functional um, assets so for example the blocks that you can walk on or maybe things you can rotate interact with and then also a few decorative patterns so for example rooftops or bushes things like that okay so I'm going to jump in into uh, SketchUp uh, first of all uh, I want to adjust my snapping tools so whenever I'll be creating objects I want them to snap to uh, one meter length so I'll go to uh, window model info and I will adjust this to one meter. Okay, so that way everything will snap to one meter, which is what I want. Okay, um, and in here, basically we'll, be, uh, we'll create a bunch of blocks and we'll reuse them throughout to create different levels. So for example, let's start by making a first block. Okay, so here's the first block. So that's already a usable block right here. Uh, so I will just duplicate that a few times uh, to use that as basis for my other designs. So let's do it like two blocks apart so that I have some space for working. So if we do three functional uh, blocks and three decorative blocks, it'll be good. Uh, and I'll just try to basically stick with the same dimensions. So, so this works already so this is our first block just a regular block that's all there is um, you can do variations for example this block with a window or this block which is a little bit cracked uh, for me I'll just use a clean block just like that um, so for the second one let's make let's make um, a little curve under it just like they have it in Monument Valley. So first of all I will select a line tool and I will draw a, a bisector and then from that bisector I'll split it uh, I'll split my cube further so that I have uh, a quarter here. So from here I, I will click on uh, arc tool and I will draw from here to here like that. I will remove unneeded lines just like that and then I will um, push it inwards to get rid of this geometry, just like that. So that shape is ready. Then I'll go ahead and I'll uh, create uh, a platform here. So I will do it by drawing out this. So that way we have one quarter which perfectly fits with this. So I can take that and I can push it inwards and remove that geometry. So right now we have three blocks ready. So our three functional blocks are here. So now we just need to recreate um, the quality of blocks. Uh, okay, so for that I would like to make... Um, so if I'll do... Let's do co uh, columns first. So for the columns I can make a line across like that, and like that like that like that okay so now I can uh, get rid of all this Oops. just like that one line at a time and then I can take this part and just push it inwards and get rid of the rest of the geometry just like that and if geometry is still here I can just select it and place it bit by bit uh, okay I 
think my columns are ready. They might be a little bit too thick, so I have to uh, maybe split them even further. But for now, they will do. Okay, so now I will do uh, the lower part of the dome. So basically, I will cut out the intersection here uh, on each side and push them through. Okay, so uh, I will start by using a line tool. Uh, so we can do something uh, like that. Get the half, get quarter, then I'll get one eighth, and I will use these lines for columns. It will all make sense in a second. Okay, just like that. I'll just remove things I don't need. Now we'll just push this in through. Uh, so to select it all at once, I will remove that. I'll select it. And I'll just push it through. Okay, so that way I just um, pushed it inwards and I got rid of the whole intersection. Okay, so I need to recreate that on this side too. It's going to be a little bit harder because there's already existing geometry, but it is possible. So what we need to do is draw the same shape here. So this is partially why I left all these lines here. So I can use them for guidance. Just like that. So it's a little bit faster to draw. Okay, that's fine. I can now, uh, I believe I can select all of this and push it inwards. Okay, so it pushed it inwards only once because there's already geometry here and it's getting on the way. Uh, let's see if I can take this part and remove it and then I'll take that part and push it inwards once. I should be able to push in uh, just that part in here. Let me move this away so it's not on the way. Okay, so I should be able to push in just that part. Here we go, that worked. So I can remove that. Remove this. And now I just need to remove all of that and basically reconstruct the structure. So let's just start by doing that. So delete, delete, delete. And delete this. So that is fine. So now I'm going to do the same shape here. Again, using a line tool to create the outline. Just like that. To the middle, from the middle to the corner. Then I'll do these lines. Like that. Like that. And uh, see how much I can push. So, so this does not work. Okay, so this does not work because there's no outline here. Let's do that. Let's push it inwards. Okay, so that's this part is done. So now I need to push this part inwards. So I might need to add a little bit more geometry like this. Maybe remove that because it might get in the way. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it won't work because there's nothing there already. But let's just try it anyway. So a lot of this uh, is just experimentation. So this actually worked. Uh, so I can delete that, I can delete that. I will remove the lower part, this part, and these lines in between. Now I can look at it from underneath, how it looks like, and see how much of the geometry I need to recreate. Okay, so. So let's just start by adding a line from here to here and then from here to here. Okay, that's okay. So we'll just remove this because that's not quite what I want. So again, using lines, I'm going to draw from here to here, then from here to here, from here to here, 
Yeah, from here it's to here. Okay, so this needs a little bit of cleaning up. So let's just remove all the lines that do not contribute to the overall shape. So get rid of all of that. So that looks nice. Yeah, so now we need to turn around and delete all of these lines. So again, anything that does not help me to define a shape, just get rid of that. Okay, so now on this side, similar kind of idea. Here we go, here we go. Okay, so that looks good. So all I need to do now is just uh, correct these parts because they are uh, too thick. Draw a line from here to here, and then do this. So that way I have perfect, well, eighth of a cube. So I'll do it on every corner, so I have just the interior parts. And now if I will select this, I should be able to just push it inwards yep, until I have just a smaller part. So I'll just do the same for each one of them. Okay, so that part is done. So now we've got one, two decorative blocks, we just need to do one more. So this is uh, the upper part of the dome. I'm going to be created by uh, First, I'm going to draw from here to here to have that midpoint in the middle. Uh, then I will uh, do this and then that. Okay, so I have uh, so basically just one fourth, and I will connect uh, points from here to the middle. But uh, first, I will need to delete them. So let me just draw the line all across like this like that. Then I will delete all unwanted, unwanted geometry. Here we go. And I will just leave, uh, well I can in fact leave this corner, but I will leave just this line because I know it's right in the middle. So what I can do is Okay, I'll delete this as well. So I can just draw to here because I know that's uh, the top part of the corner. So I will draw from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. And you can see I have the dome part of the building and now I can delete this line. It was just used for purely for guidance. Okay, now I can move it a little bit closer. Um, and now I will see if it all works. So a thing to do when you finish working with your assets is uh, make sure you turn them into groups. So select the, the entire asset, make it into a group. Okay. Uh, so for example, this is a uh, model one, but then I'll turn this into a group two, call it, um, so we can call it the bridge part one. Uh, so let's call this one bridge two. Uh, this part make a group column columns. Okay, and this part right here. We'll call it, um, I don't know, dome part one. And this one I will call dome part two. Okay, so it's just quite useful to remember what is what. Okay, so now that they are groups, I can freely move them around and the objects will not st stick to each other. Uh, so let's just recreate like a basic. Uh, level. Let's just see how they kind of like line up with each other. So we'll just um, copy this and move it a few times. And just 
let's see how that is going to look like. Okay, now we'll select the bridge part. I'll move that here as well. And make sure you always copy it so you're not um, well, make, make sure you always copy it so you, you keep the original assets. Well, actually, I didn't follow my own rule, so I will leave that here. Okay, here we go. So I can take this. So this can be rotated in four directions. I will rotate it um, from here to here and move it outwards okay so now it fits uh, so let's see how the bridge is fitting together so we'll click on that copy it move it here so if I want this to align to this part I can click on the corner and just move it like that okay so that definitely works uh, now let's try to uh, use the columns I press control and I'll move the object control move the object control move the object control move the object okay so we have that so I press control and I'll move the object upwards so I want this to be slightly taller than this so again control move the object here and you can see how it fits perfectly control move the object here now for the top part of the dome, I can actually maybe leave some of them like that. Just see what it looks like. Or I can just fill them in like that. And you can see how my level is really shaping up now. I'm creating structure for the level out of very simple geometric shapes. For example, things like this, and maybe something like that. You can copy two of them together. Move them here. Uh, maybe if these shapes are getting on the way, I can move them away a little bit. Is that move that away? So I can select this, copy it, move it here, uh, maybe also move it here and rotate it like that. Now move it back in here. Well, and here we go. You can see how we created a level from Monument Valley. In a very simple way, you can do a little bit more elaborate design. But this is how you would go about uh, creating these assets and then creating levels. So you can even do like mockups of the levels in SketchUp. Um, so again, if you want to add a little bit of color, you can go to Materials. Uh, select color in your materials, select the parts that you want to be different colors. So for example, I want them to be orange. I can achieve it like that. If I want to give uh, the bottom part a little bit of contrast, I can turn it into maybe teal. Maybe that's a little bit a bit too extreme. We have other colors. It would be nice to make it dark gray, so I can always edit the color and uh, make it. Oh, that's alpha transparency, so hold on. Make it something like this. Yeah, you can always play with colors, see what works, what doesn't. But here are some basic stages how to produce 
modular art for your games. Finally, I have recreated uh, one of the levels for Monument Valley. It looks like this. So uh, what you can do is you can go to camera and change it to parallel projection uh, because in game they use uh, parallel projection also known as orthographic projection. And I think it's lined up more or less like this. Okay, so I also try to match the color of the background. To match the color of the background, you need to go to styles, edit, and here's the color. So it's something more or less like that. So another thing, I can turn off these outlines. So if I go to view, edit, and we can do uh, profiles, and then we can also turn off edges. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. We need a little bit more shading though. So, so f shading and textures are here. So let's enable shadows. So yeah, with shadows it looks kind of closer to what they have in game. If I will go to set of styles, I can go to shadows and I can change the time of the day. Actually, that's quite interesting. I know that's not how it is in the game, but, but I'm just trying to match the graphic. So, yeah, we can disable shadows like that. So, that looks quite interesting. And then um, change the lightness. Okay, so if you had better assets, it would look better. You can, for the practice sake, you can fill it in with uh, bushes at the bottom without the details here. So there's like a little uh, rotator in the middle. Uh, we have little blue flags. You can fill in all of the details that you have in the game. But for the practice sake, this is a good exercise. And uh, uh, so that's what it looks like. I'll just rotate it around to show you what we've created. It's quite an interesting shape. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time.